Hi, this is Gary with MacMost.com. Let me show you how you can use numbers to keep track of items that you collect. MacMost is brought to you thanks to a great group of more than a thousand supporters. Go to MacMost.com slash Patreon. There you could read more about the Patreon campaign. Join us and get exclusive content and course discounts. So Numbers is a very versatile spreadsheet program that you can use for a whole variety of different tasks. But one thing a lot of home users like to use it for is to just keep track of a library of items. It could be books or anything else that you collect. So to start with let's create a new Numbers document and I'm just going to use the standard blank template. Now as an example here I'm going to use a list of sample books. These could be books that you collect. But it really could be anything you collect that you want to keep an inventory of. So we want to think about which columns we want. For books obviously we want to start with the title for each book. So we'll put title in the header field of the first column. Then in the second column we'll do author. And then we try to think of other bits of information that we want to record about each item. So for books we may for instance have format like paperback, hardcover, and so on. And maybe the year of publication. So we'll do year. Now let's start with that. And normally if I knew that's all we were going to record about each item I would get rid of these three columns here. But I have a feeling there's probably going to be more as we build this list. So we can start by entering the first title. And then to enter data in Numbers if you want to go to the cell to the right then you just use Tab. So I can tab over to the next cell and then I can enter in the next bit of information. Now to go down to the next row I would press Return. And you can see here it's even smart enough to know I want to go back to the beginning of the row. So now I can enter in the next title. So let me go and input in a bunch of titles and authors. So there I go. I've got something useful already. I have a list of books and authors and now I can go and add additional information. So maybe I look at some of these books and I label them as paperback and other ones hardcover. And maybe I have other categories as well. And I'll go and fill out the rest of this with some sample data. And I'll go fill in the next column with data the year of publication or maybe this is the year for the edition that I own. So now I've got a pretty good inventory already of what I've got. Now I can adjust column widths depending upon my needs. So for instance this title column here a lot of these you can see grab on two or three lines. I could grab the line between the two headers here between A and B and drag it to the right if I make it just long enough so that it fits the name of my longest book that's kind of nice but I may just want to settle for having it be on one or two lines like that. And the same thing for author. Here I've got all the authors on one line. Well almost all. So let me go and adjust that. Maybe get it to about there. Format looks pretty good. It looks like that's about appropriate. But year is pretty long. It's only ever going to be these four digits. So I might as well shrink this a little bit like that to save some space so I can see more on the screen at the same time. Now there may be other things I want to add as well. For instance I may want to add a notes field here. So I can add some notes about a particular thing like maybe for this book here uh, need a better copy. For this one here I may want to put that in signed. That kind of thing. It's just a catch all column here for additional information. Now sometimes I may lend books to somebody. So I may want to have a column called Lending Info and put the name of friends that I've lent the book to. I may even want to have a rating column. Now the ratings of course are just going to be my subjective opinions of things. But I can do them a variety of different ways. I can give them a letter grade. I can give them a number from 1 to 10. One of the things I can do is go to Format Cell and I can change the formatting here. So far the formatting has been pretty straightforward. It's almost all text except for a number for the year. But for these cells here I could change them to something better. I'm going to double click on the columns letter here and that selects all of the cells in that column except the header cell. And I want to change the format here and set it to star rating. And this gives me a 0 to 5 rating. So I could say rate a book like that or like that or like that. It's just a little easier than entering in a number and it's very easy to see which books have high and low ratings. Now if I want to add an additional column I would scroll over to the right and I would drag this out here to add another column. It's going to fill it with what's in here. I'm not going to want that. I'm going to 
changes to an automatic field here. Press delete to zero it all out. And I could have something else here like you know maybe a last read year and put the year that I last read the book. If instead I just wanted to get rid of a column at the end I could click here next to the letter and I have all sorts of options in the context menu including delete column. I could also easily rearrange columns. It may make sense to have notes always be the last column. So if I click here where the letter is at the top and then click and drag I can drag to the right and I can move notes to the right. That way I could stretch out this column to give a little more room for notes. And maybe I could shrink the rating column and you can see how that gracefully shrinks the actual stars there and makes them not oversized like they were before. It's really easy to move columns around so you shouldn't be afraid to do so. For instance if you wanted to put the author first you could drag the author column to the left here and have the author first. Now that's not permanent because I could very easily just drag this column back to the right again. So don't be afraid to reorder things depending upon your needs. All too often I see people very concerned about exactly where things are and in reality it's just easy to keep changing things all the time. Now you can also move rows around too. So if you want to reorder things you can select a row here and drag that down to reorder the books. You can select one row and then shift click to select a group and then drag the whole group down. So it's very easy to reorder rows here. It's also very easy to enter in new data. You shouldn't have any blank rows at the end of your table. If you do like that then you always grab this little circle with two lines in it at the bottom and drag it up so you have no additional rows. When you want to add a new row just select any cell in that last row there and press Return and it inserts a new row ready for you to type in the new information. If you instead want to insert a row at some specific spot you can click in a row here and you can see you also have the controls here for rows just like you had for columns. And you can click there and you can add a row above or below the currently selected row. Now one of the things you want to do with your list is probably sort it. So for instance if you wanted to sort it alphabetically by author then you could click here and one of the other options is sort ascending or descending. So I can sort ascending and then I get a list by author. As you can see it's very useful to have the authors with last name first just for this kind of sorting. But if I wanted to sort by year I could easily sort by year as well. And you can see how easy it is for me to continue to sort things. So I can sort it by year now but I can go back and easily sort by author later. And if I want to sort by multiple things then I could just basically sort by the secondary thing first. So let's sort by title and then let's sort by author. And now we could see for instance that we get these three books by the same author and the titles are in order. But you could also go to Organize here on the right. Click Sort. You can sort the entire table. Add a column. So I can say Sort by Author first, Ascending, and then Sort by Title after that. And then Sort Now. And I'm going to get exactly the same as what I had before. But now I have an easy way anytime I make a change or add new books to the end to click Sort Now and then get it sorted in this order. Now filtering is right here and it's also very useful. If I go to Filter I could add a filter here and I could filter based on any one of these columns. So let's say I just wanted to see my paperbacks. I could say Sort by Format and I could add a rule here or I could easily just select or deselect something. So I could say no hardcovers, no trade paperbacks and see only my paperbacks. And you can see this right here. I can click the little trash can icon and remove that. Let's add another filter by Author. You can see a list of all the authors. But I could say text and starts with and then just the authors that have names that start with E. And you can see that's what I get now. So there are lots of different ways to use filters here. And you can easily add them and remove them as you want. One word of advice though when you're going to add new rows to your inventory here turn off filters and add them then. And then if you want to go back to the filter you can turn it back on. You can also use categories. So with categories you can add a category like for instance Format. And you can see here that it now groups all the hardcovers together, all the trade paperbacks together and all the paperbacks together. So you get these nice groupings now. And that's useful for viewing your inventory as well. And it's easy to turn on and off categories just like filters. Now let's say we want to print this so we can have a reference that we can carry around with us. So we go to File and then Print and it's going to give you a preview 
of what you're going to see here. Now you can see it's too wide of a spreadsheet to fit on one piece of paper. But we can adjust the scale here on the right and get it so it all just perfectly fits like that. And now you can see it and it goes across two pages here, probably more for a real inventory of books. But chances are you might not want all this information if you're printing. For instance, you may not need your rating or lending info or even year. So I'm going to select all three of these columns here. Click here and then Hide Selected Columns. It's easy to hide columns and you can see here A, B, C, and G. I've got these hidden columns. To reveal columns you can click on the column to the left of it and unhide those columns or you could just go to Table and then unhide all columns to bring them back. But the idea here is with hidden columns now when I go to Print those columns won't be included. So I have more space and I could adjust the scale, make it a little easier to read. Now I'm going to give a title to this table here and I'm going to call it My Books. And I'm going to save it, something I probably should have done at the very beginning. And I'm going to save it to my Documents folder in iCloud. And the reason I want to save it in iCloud is because I want to have access to this list anywhere I go. So I want to be able to pull it up in the Numbers app on my iPhone so that I can check it and say if I see a book sale I can figure out whether or not I already have a book before I buy a second copy. So I'll call this MyBooks.Numbers. And now on my iPhone if I look in the right place inside of iCloud Drive, in this case in the Documents folder, I'll find that file there. I'll be able to open it up in Numbers on my iPhone. And this is always going to stay in sync. So any changes I make while I'm on my iPhone while out, I'll see those on my Mac because it's the same document. And the same thing if I change the document on my Mac, I don't have to do anything else to resync it. I'm looking at the same document on my iPhone, so I'll see the latest changes I've made. So if you've been thinking about using your Mac to keep an inventory of things that you collect, I hope this example of a number spreadsheet to do that is helpful. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, click the thumbs up button below to let me know. I publish new tutorials each weekday. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out.